G'day, Chris Muir here from the ADF Product Management Team at Oracle Corporation. This is ADF Architecture TV. In this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel, we're going to be continuing on to talk about logging or instrumentation. In the previous episode, we talked about the design of logging or where you should add logs into your application. Whereas specifically in this episode, we're going to talk about the ADF logger in more detail. So let's get on with it, drill down and find out a little bit more about the ADF logger. So a good question to ask straight off is why use the ADF logger over other available facilities? Well, the first thing to consider is, well, system.out.println is not a logger. Now, put your hands on your hearts and say that you've never accidentally left a system.out.println piece of code in your actual ADF applications. And as you know, well, while it'll print out of the console, it really does nothing for a ADF application production because the logging messages cannot be actually easily captured or seen, and as it goes on to say here, been filtered. I do remember many years ago as a junior programmer, one of my colleagues said, hey Chris, come and look at this interesting bug. I'll um, show you how it works. And he put in a system.out.println message into the application that said my name, Chris. Unfortunately, that little bit of code went into production and the customers at the time actually lodged a support request and said, why does the application every once in a while say Chris? What does that mean? Is it some sort of acronym for something, some sort of event? So rather embarrassingly, in the next release, we actually got rid of that system.out.println. So don't use system.out.println. Use a set of logging or logger utility classes to do the actual logging, and that's where the ADF logger comes into place. So the ADF logger, okay, there is plenty of other logging or logging facility, facilities out there, such as Log4j, but there are a number of benefits of the ADF logger over those other solutions. First of all, well, not a benefit, but just to say that the ADF logger is under the covers at java.util logging implementation, but just extended from Oracle's own um, perspective. And from Oracle's own perspective, you get it as part of the overall ADF framework. No extra libraries need to be included, it's optimized, no class loading issues, it's all just part of the solution. It's all there for you to use. In addition, the logger and the actual log output, well, is fully integrated with JDeveloper and Oracle's Enterprise Manager. We'll see in this episode the Oracle Diagnostic Logger and how JDeveloper makes that utility available to you and makes it very easy for turning on and off the logs, watching what's going on, getting log output, filtering, and so on and so forth. In addition, the ADF logger is a part of a wider logging mechanism in Fusion Middleware. May You may or may not be aware that but in the middleware stack of technologies that Oracle provides, there's not just WebLogic Server and ADF, but there's other products such as HTTP servers, web caches, and many other type middleware type products. Now, as a request comes into that stack of middleware, you can actually track a particular user request in, across the entire stack using something called the ECID. And we'll talk about the ECID in a little bit more detail in a moment. But as you can see here, Oracle just doesn't have its head in one little box in terms of logging and just considering ADF. It's considering the bigger picture of all your middleware infrastructure and trying to give your system administrators a better understanding of the messages flowing in and out from a logging perspective. Another major advantage of the ADF logger is it can be turned off at runtime, or turned on and off I should say. Some other logging facilities out there provided by third parties, you've basically got to stop and start the application and reconfigure it to change any logging settings. The ADF logger is it's dynamic. You can make the setting changes while the application is running. So that's not only from a J developer's perspective in the integrated web logic server, but even from a production perspective where you have an ADF application deployed and with the likes of Oracle Enterprise Manager and the Fusion Middleware Control Center, you can make these logging changes. So what I'd like to do at this point is give you a little demonstration of configuring the ADF logger and seeing its output in JDeveloper. Now to be truthful, the ADF Architecture TV channel doesn't really exist to show you how to configure JDeveloper and ADF and showing you lots of little demos. That was never our intent, we always wanted to do the bigger picture. But because many customers I think haven't really come across the ADF logger and aren't using it, we really did want to get it into this set of presentations, this set of episodes for the ADF Architecture TV channel so that you can make use of it. So let's kick on with a little demo. 
So here we have a very simple little ADF application. It's made up of an unbounded task load that calls a page called main, and the main page has a region calling the department's task flow. Now if we have a look at the department's task flow, what I'm specifically interested in this in this guy is that, well, I have a task load being task flow init and task flow finalizer methods, basically configured it as an initializer and finalizer on the overall department's task flow. And in that task load being, ah, okay, this is where the logging code comes into play. Do you notice that I have an ADF logger? Okay, so ADF logger, which I've created via call to ADF logger dot create ADF logger. Now, you'll notice that I've passed in a parameter here, task load being dot class, and that will pass in the package name and the class name to the overall ADF logging framework. Now this is important because in a moment when we actually turn on the logging, there are all sorts of different loggers that the ADF logging framework has in place. And we don't want to turn them all on by default, we want to turn on certain ones of them. And the one I want to turn on here is identified by the package and task load bean name. Now just look, before we look at that, you'll notice here we have the task load init and finalizer methods, and now you can see me making use of the logger class and calling one of its numerous methods, in this particular example, a method to log at info level, and we're just pumping out certain messages here. So all good and well, that's our logging class may uh, set up in our code. Now let's actually have a look at this in terms of the log output in our running application. So down here, I already have the ADF application running, and I then want to open up what's called the Oracle Diagnostic Locker. So you access that by going to the Actions, Oracle Diagnostic Logging option here, and this will open up this little further window. Now, if you happen to be using JDeveloper 12C, there is one additional step you need to do. You need to go to the Source window, and the Console Handler option here, you need to switch the level from Warning to All, as I've done, and this will mean that the any logs will be written to the Console or Logging window down here. Anyway, back to this Logging window, and you'll notice that there are all sorts of different packages and classes that the ADF logger can pick up. But specifically here, you'll note that it is dynamically realized that there is a view.taskloadbeans logger of which I can now switch on the finest logging level. So from here, if we go over to something like my favorite browser and go to our main application and hit return, now you can see the application come up now, the department's task flow and an additional employee's task flow down below. And if we return to ADF, I should say to JDeveloper, go to the running window, while we do get some diagnostic message out of, the, out, of the, the, out of the framework that aren't relevant to what we're interested in here, you can see my specific log messages here um, being logged to the console, such as the department's task flow is initialized, the employee's task flow is initialized, and a little bit later on you can see them finalizing and doing all sorts of different things. So now we can see some really awesome logging information coming out of our ADF applications in terms of the actual behavior and what the user is influencing as they click on different operations and buttons in our application. So it's well worth mentioning that the Oracle Diagnostic Logger and the associated instrumentation in the ADF framework remo removes an old way of getting logging information out of the framework. You might be familiar with this option here, minus D JVO dot debug output equals console. It was a flag you used to set on the run configuration of your ADF applications to get more logging output out of the ADF business component framework. Well, now you have a much better option because what you can do via the Oracle Diagnostic Logger is set the config level on the following three packages, or we should say logging utility classes. That is oracle.adf, oracle.adf internal, and oracle.jbo. And the collection of three there now will give you a lot of ADF logging, implement, uh, logging information on what the actual ADF framework is doing for you. Now obviously there's more here than oracle.jbo, the ADF business components classes, you're now getting the complete framework. So you might want to turn one on or all three to get a really good footprint of what the ADF framework is actually doing at the moment. And the main advantage of the ODL, again, the Oracle Diagnostic Logger and the ADF Logging Implementation, just like we mentioned previously, is you no longer need to restart the server to make, this, uh, make these options actually log for you. That was one of the major pain in the butts about the minus D JBO dot debug output console options.
Now you might be going, hey Chris, thanks very much for showing me this Oracle Diagnostic Logger, but that's all good and well for developers who are working with the integrated web logic server, but how does that help me in a well, production system? We don't have JDeveloper connected or running with those production systems all the time. Well, that's where Oracle's Enterprise Manager comes into play and an extension known as the Fusion Middleware Control Center. The Fusion Middleware Control Center is an extension to EM and it's designed to add all sorts of additional facilities to Enterprise Manager for, well, not just ADF applications, but all Fusion Middleware type systems. Now specifically for ADF systems and the other Fusion Middleware systems, it does give you logging facilities, the ability to turn on and off the loggers via different options in the Fusion Middleware Control Console. So from here, you can actually turn on and off the logs, and if you want, generate those logs to an Oracle Diagnostic Logging XML file type, and then re-import them into JDeveloper to use the ODL to help analyze them. So as you can see, Oracle's gone to a lot of thought here in how you can make use of these logging facilities, not just from a development perspective, from a production and system administrator perspective too. So given that we've now talked about Fusion Middleware Control, and obviously it's not just about turning logging on for ADF applications, but all types of Fusion Middleware applications, Something that's very valuable to know about is something called the ECID, which stands for the Execution Context ID. Now, across your Fusion Middleware stack, you may have a request or multiple requests coming in that, well, will basically exercise different parts of your overall Fusion Middleware solution. Maybe your HTTP server, your web caches, your web logic servers, your ADF applications, your SOA applications, and so on and so forth. Now, if each one of those tools had its own separate logging facility, it'd be very hard to know or identify a request basically working its way across the entire stack. So what the ECID does is it provides a unique identifier for each request, so basically the processing of each request and the associated response across the entire stack. And this allows you now to coordinate all the logs that are generated via the one request. Now, if you have hundreds, thousands, millions of requests coming in, the ECID is not going to be sufficient for working out what's going wrong. What you also need to do is be able to coordinate the ECID with a specific user that's having problems. So it's Enterprise Manager that basically allows you to connect the username, the associated external user's identity against the actual ECID. So with that in mind, once you have the actual ECIDs for a specific user, you can then look through the logs to work out what's going on. Now, if you're particularly keen in your own ADF logs or in some sort of information you want to give to the user, you can actually access the ECID programmatically. Okay, so you can access the ECID and put it in the logs or give it to the user and maybe they can coordinate that information back with you. So as we can see here, and I'm just looking at my notes, that specific uh, mechanism is weblogic.diagnostics.context.diagnosticcontexthelper.getcontextid. So make a call for that and you'll get the ECID for the current request. Just remember though, including that call in your ADF application, you're basically tying your ADF application to a WebLogic server platform. That call won't work on, say, ADF Central's running on the Glassfish platform. Now the last part of this little episode I want to cover is I want to introduce to you another logging feature called the ADF Request Tracing feature. Now, very few people know about this, but it's an awesome diagnostic tool for looking at in the JSF and extended ADF life cycles, where the overall life cycle is spending its time in terms of performance. So this is a great tool for working out, hey, is it the update of the model layer that's taking most time, or is it the rendering phase? You get really good insight into where your overall screens are spending all their time. So again, typically we wouldn't show you any demos in the ADF Architecture TV, but let's actually have a look, a little demo of actually configuring the ADF uh, request tracing tool. Okay, so what we have here is the previous logging screen that you saw in pretty much the same application, nothing new happening here. But what I'm gonna do from here is in the logging screen, I'm going to turn on the Oracle ADF Diagnostics logging, okay? And I'm gonna switch that on the config level. Now that I've done that, if I invoke my application, so I have it back here, I'm just simply going to press refresh, 
Okay, so we see that the screen refreshes and you can see a lot more additional logs in the background. We can then invoke this tool called the Oracle Diagnostic Log Analyzer, which can either be accessed via this link or the, uh, the tools Oracle Diagnostic Log Analyzer option. So with that specific option, what you now see is it has the ability to look at all the recent requests and we can search all the recent requests. Okay, so search and ah, oh, here's all the separate requests that have come into my system more recently since I've had that diagnostic logging option turned on. And you'll see the very latest one here was at 5.27. We then click on that and I just expand the logging window so you can see the output here. What you can see now is a window that shows you the different phases of the ADF lifecycle. So restore view, render response, and as we expand those, we get even more information about what's been happening in terms of the framework. Now I'm severely limited by screen real estate here to show you the output, but if you look very carefully, you can see, for example, in the ADF prepare model phase, things like regions being processed. And if you notice very carefully, there's the department's tough flow being processed and the associated time that's being taken to be processed. So 22 milliseconds. So this overall trace facility can give you a great idea of where the cost is in the application on rendering and doing all the sorts of things that the JSF and ADF lifecycle typically do. It's a very valuable facility here. And again, one that most customers and ADF developers don't know about. Okay, so that concludes our set of episodes on the ADF logger. As we've seen, you have a discussion on the design or where to put your ADF logs, and you also have an idea of now from the ADF logger what you can do with it, the Oracle Diagnostic Logger and the great little tool, the ADF Request Tracing Tool. So hopefully these two episodes have been useful to you. In the next set of episodes, we're going to separately talk about building your ADF applications and then deploying your ADF applications. And what we're going to look at in those particular episodes is not how you do it, but is the pros and cons of all the different approaches. Okay, so there are multiple different ways to skin a cat in terms of building and deploying your applications, but I want to give you an idea of why you might pick some of the options over the others. So thanks again for joining us on the ADF Architecture TV channel and I'm Chris Muir. I hope to see you in the next episode very soon.